Hey, you know what that means? We're at the branch office of the TDD report. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we're working on a combination TDD report and in the lawn report today. So I'll let you start and then I'll bring up my story. I've got two stories actually. One is from me and then one is from my buddy Tony about motorcycles. It'll be pretty good. Oh. Actually, I'm saying welcome to the in the lawn. Yeah. Urban Rider. Uh, I mean, I've never had anybody else in here except for me. <laughs> I'm your first guest, huh? First guest. Hey. First guest. Good. Uh, I can start off to ask you how was your trip over? Nice. I uh, was chased by storms. I was threatened by storms, but overall pretty much a dry ride. A few sprinkles, that was all it was. So That's good. Good ride. That's great. And I was following the storms on the radar as you were coming this way. And like, is it going to hit, hit them? Mm -hmm. Luckily, they looked like they, were, they did really good for you. I um, mean, this is normally your go because I mean, you wouldn't, you've had the TDD report for the longest. Okay. You so I'm going to let you go ahead and take over. Okay. Some people traveling, you might have an idea in your mind what's the flattest state in the United States. Uh, pretty much to everybody that's uh, been in the lower 48 states. First thing comes to mind, Kansas. That's what I've always thought too. Uh, I lived in Kansas City when I was younger, driven across Kansas. It does seem very flat. And there was this article, it was kind of like a, a humorous article in 2003 where this news um, reporter judged Kansas compared to a pancake, an IHOP pancake. They took it and measured it under a microscope for the differences and were comparing if Kansas was the same size as a pancake, would it be as flat as a pancake? And it was, but since it was mostly humorous, actually a lot of other states, many other states, are as flat as a pancake or flatter than a pancake. And if you would think about it, and according to Jerry Dobson, who's the professor of geography at the University of Kansas, um, Kansas is not as flat as you may think. Now, what he did is he did a study not just on the differences in elevation. Sure, Kansas might be pretty flat if you took the highest elevation compared to the lowest elevation, but people don't perceive flatness that way. Uh, in his statement, he said if you were actually looking over a flat plain and three miles away saw a tree that was like 30 foot tall, you would still think overall everything was pretty flat because the distance and everything like that. So using human perception of what is flatness, he divided out these states into 90 kilometer grids and then judged each grid as to whether it was flat, flatter, or flattest. And by doing this, believe it or not, Kansas didn't even make the top five as far as flattest states. Hmm. So, and as a matter of fact, what really surprised and shocked me was that the state I live in is actually the second flattest state, Illinois. Illinois is way flatter than Kansas. And the one that is the very flattest state, some people actually, if I ask, they might agree as this being a, a pretty flat state, the state of Florida. So that's number one. Illinois is second. And then you've got North Dakota, Louisiana, Minnesota, Delaware, and only then do you have Kansas as number seven. And then you round off with Texas, Nevada, and Indiana. And then I'm going to give you links to the articles too. There's even a map up above to where it talks about um, judging states by the very flattest parts of them. And then Illinois, if you're judging only by the very, which state has the very flattest parts, Illinois drops from number two to number three. But all the links will be in above. There's a nice map to go over. You can read the article. It's all great and it might change your perception of what states are flat and what states are not flat. It's very interesting. Yeah. Especially since I live in the foothills of I mean, the Appalachians. I mean, I've been out to Iowa, out to see uh, maybe Tom's eight. Yeah. I mean, that was that looks so flat to me, but yet it didn't even make the. If, before I read this article, if I was just off the top of my head, I would say probably Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska. I probably wouldn't even put Illinois in the top five. So that really surprised me that Illinois made number two. I think that's very surprising. Yeah. Good information. So anyway, we've done some riding together. We picked up some more rubber bands. As a geek, I always have a pocket full of rubber bands. They've saved my bacon so many times with holding things together. I mean, uh, probably to me it's number three after you always have WD-40 because if it's supposed to move and it doesn't move, you use WD-40. And I have my duct tape in my backpack too. That way if it moves and it's not supposed to move, you duct tape it. So duct tape, WD-40, rubber bands. Always have those with you. Which that ride would have been 
a few videos ago. Yeah. I'll be uploading that. <laughs> yeah, we went. I was I was running low on my supply of rubber bands, so we went to Staples, and I found out the only size they had uh, of just all one size rubber bands was like a three pound package <laughs> like this. I'm like, I don't need that much, but they had a small variety pack. For Lifetime rubber bands pass about every motor vlog you meet. Yeah. <laughs> Although for me, a lifetime supply would still probably, I bet it's even three pounds, may, I'd be glad if it lasts for a year. I didn't want to carry that. I didn't want to carry a three pound bag of rubber bands with me. That's beyond goofy with me. Oh. Now, if you, if you had a bike like, say, uh, Keith and the Buckeye Boys, you might need that three pound bag. But <laughs> I would probably be tempted if I had front uh, boxes like you guys have, and I know Navy Thomas runs them too sometimes, yeah. I would be tempted to bring more stuff because when you have the space to put it, Sure, you want to put stuff there. Yeah, you know, honestly, I found out though, you have that much space, you end up filling it up with stuff you really don't need. Yeah. So I mean, that's then you got this big heavy bike going down the road. Yeah. So myself, I'm actually working through different tools that you don't really need, mm -hmm. and lighten it up and make some more room for like like camera equipment. Yeah. And the stuff that we use on a daily basis while I'm there. Yeah, like I said before in one of my posts, the more you ride, the more you decide stuff you're going to get rid of because you've been carrying it around so long, and the chance of you using it. And even if you did need it, you could stop at a big box store and buy it. So exactly. Why are you just carrying all that weight for no reason? Exactly. I mean, we, I mean, both ride decent bikes. I mean, they, they, they tend to hold yeah. up except for, I mean, you might pick up a nail or something, but yeah, that's a, that's the most really. Yeah. So far, I've never had a disastrous interruption to a trip, so that's been very nice. The bikes have been very reliable, and uh, everything's gone pretty well. So anyway, as the um, last story on my TDD report, we're going to probably share this video back and forth, or we'll decide how we're going to post it. But as the last video, my friend Tony, um, who lives down south, came up with a, a really good place to where you can get regulator rectifiers. I noticed some Hondas and some Yamahas, but it may happen with other bikes too, seem to really burn through the regulator rectifiers, the old diode style. And he's got a guy that makes these kits that have MOSFET regulators, and I guess... They just stay together, they stay good, they don't go bad. So if for some reason you have a motorcycle that has a regulator rectifier problem, um, this might solve it for you. And I'll right at the end here I will post his uh, about three minute video where he talks about it, the price, where to get them, everything like that, and I hope it helps out somebody. Because that can be very frustrating when you have a, a part constantly going bad from heat or stress on your motorcycle. I actually had that problem with the KZ750 that I had. Yeah. I had to change it out. But yeah. that, that'd be a good, good place to go to. Yeah, yeah. I actually on my uh, Kawasaki, I went to a solid state too, and they had them available uh, turn signals. For some reason, the uh, turn signal blinker on my uh, Kawasaki Vulcan 500, they would last about a year. So finally, I got tired of paying the Kawasaki price. And what I was doing for a while is I was buying the old mechanical um, style for cars, but um, they needed a little bit more amperage than the bike would do. So I'd crack the case open and actually weaken the spring and put it back together and tape it and glue it back up. But still, it only lasted about a year, and then yeah. it would go out again. So I finally saw on the shelf, and it looked like the connectors would fit. I saw a solid state unit, and I put it on, and I've never messed with it in the last five years. Hmm. So some of the new solid state electronics is good if you want your bike to be more reliable. Good info. Yeah. So anyway, I'm really enjoying being on Mike's show. I'm enjoying staying with Mike. This is a really great, great place to stay. They've been taking very good care of me. Um, you want to say anything as we close? I say thank you for coming. I mean, I really, I really enjoyed the cup. The collaboration here. Yeah. I mean, this is something very different and something new to me. And, and so since the uh, in the lawn has just started, yeah, nice kickoff, I think. Be I sure, think. yeah, be sure and check it out. I mean, uh, shameless plug for any of my any of my friends involved in anything. I love giving shameless plugs. So check out the In the Lawn podcast on Muzzle Mike's channel, and there will be a link to it as everything in the description below. Remember, mine's on Saturdays. This is on Sundays. Yep. And take care, everybody. And like I said, when I'm on the road. I may catch you next week, but there's no promise that I'm going to stick to the schedule till I get back home, but we'll try our best. Hello, Chuck. Uh, this is going to be a quick review for the TDD report on the uh, regulator rectifier kit I purchased. And the kit I purchased, purchased is... The Super MOSFET Kit FH0220AA. Easy, fast, and complete. As close to plug and play as you can get. Uh, the FH020AA with circuit breaker or maxi fuse set up. Now with PVC wire sheathing.
I've had it installed on my bike for quite a while now and have had no issues. It is the way I recommend everybody go instead of going back with factory OEM, especially if you're on, on, or on a Honda. Uh, what it is, a lot of the manufacturers use um, diode-controlled regulator rectifiers, which are kind of crappy compared to MOSFET. And the price of the kit I use, there's three different kits available. The price of the kit I used is $139.95 plus $5 shipping and handling. And also I chose to add a $5 uh, LED charging light to add to mine. And the kits st start at $121.95 plus $5, which that's the one, that's a builder kit. Um, Hardly none of that. The plugs ain't got the wires on them or nothing. And my kit's pretty much plug and play in the Super MOSFET Super Series kit. Uh, is also pretty close to plug and play. Which uh, I think it is using a... Yeah, it's still using a MOSFET regulator rectifier. There's a little bit of difference in those two and then a lot of difference in the cheaper one. Uh, the one I went to is the middle, which is the uh, Super MOSFET kit. And like I said, I love it. I have not had a problem with it. And the place to order it at is RoadsterCycle.com, the home of the original FH020AA upgrade kits and now the HSH775 series kits. And then he's got more stuff, and they pretty much fit any bike. It's a universal kit. Uh, so Y'all feel free to look them up online, RoadsterCycle.com. And the guy's name there is Jack, who builds the kits. Well, that's about it. I'm sending this to Chuck so he can add it in on the t weekly TDD report in about three weeks. Catch y'all later. Bye.